Hi everybody, welcome to another podcast for the Retro Gamers Club. It's going well pretty good. This is the second one I'm doing and it's only been one week so I'm doing well, I'm staying on schedule. Got a bunch of things I'm going to bring up today for all you Retro Gamers Club members and all you non-members or people who want to become members. I'll put down at the bottom somewhere around here in the link so you can go join the club. I don't think I really went into the benefits of being in the club last time except to say that you are able to download games that we write in digital format without any cost. So here's a few other benefits for you. You have, right now I'm concentrating on the ColecoVision and on the Atari and the Odyssey, Magnavox Odyssey and the Intellivision, the older systems. But if you have an older system that's not working right, you got a ColecoVision that's got garbage screen or the controllers aren't working. If you're a club member, all you have to do is ship it to us. We'll fix it. You pay the cost of shipping it to me and the cost of shipping it back. You don't pay for any labor. If I have to put in new parts, I will let you know, and I may or may not charge, depending on how much it costs, but I'm just going to charge the cost of the parts. If I'm able to salvage old parts from my parts boxes and put them in, I probably won't charge you any for that. Best part of the club membership is that you get free repairs, as, well, as long as you're a member. Membership price is $50 a year, which is not a bad price if you think about it. Seriously, think about it. you got a Clegal Vision, and it's got garbage on the screen. Well, it's totally useless. You can't use it. But if you send it to me, and I replace the video RAM, I might charge you $10 for the video RAM chips. But after that, you get the Clegal Vision back. It's working just fine, and now your doorstop is now worth 100 bucks. So you've made your money back. So think about becoming a member. The Retro Gamers Club is an exciting new way of bringing members new games that are developed by 8-Bit Millie Games. As a club member, you will get exclusive access to new games before they are available to the general public. You will be able to test demos and have your ideas incorporated into the games as they are written. When the game is done, you will be able to download a personalized copy of the game, as well as hundreds of other games with no additional charge from our private website. The club members also get deep discounts on physical copies of games and can purchase them online months before they are available to the general public. As a member, you also have access to free repairs. Yes, free repairs. Do you have a controller that isn't working or a console with bad memory? Club members can get these repaired for free. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the club benefits. Visit the Retro Gamers Club website today for more information about all the exciting benefits and to join. So the next thing I wanted to show you is, well, there's, I got a lot of things I want to show you. First off, I'm kind of proud of the fact we got our business license for the store and we now have a name for it. And it is one of the most original names for a game store you could have. The name for my game store is, hold on, Retro Game Store. <laughs> I thought, why not? I don't need to call it anything special, just call it what it is. And I figured that that's taken. Well, guess what? It's not taken in the state of Ohio. So we are now known as the Retro Game Store. And gallery. I'll put that on as an afterthought. And gallery because that's not part of the DBA. So the DBA is Retro Game Store. We're putting together a website and everything that we will have in the store here will also be online. So you can actually don't have to come visit to buy the stuff. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. 
Next thing I wanted to bring up is, I have a number of games still available through 88 Millie Games. We got Pizuro. This game is for the Atom. It's a fun little game. It's my first commercial game I ever wrote. I have five copies of it left. You can get it online at 8 Bit Millie Games. Then we still have Crazy Climber. I'm still making some copies of this one because as long as I have the boxes, I'm making the copies. But as soon as I run out of boxes and the labels, I'm not making any. So I think I can make maybe another 10 or 15 of them. Those are available in the store. Term Oil is also available in the store. And again, same condition as Crazy Climber. As long as I have some boxes and labels left, I'm going to make copies. Once I run out of them, I'm not making no more. Arcadian, on the other hand, I think I have like 15 of these left. And then it's done. I'm not ordering new boxes. But as I said in the last one, Arcadian 2 is coming up in January-ish. But that's still available in the store. Anybody who has a Mattel Aquarius? This is turmoil for the Mattel Aquarius. I have five copies left of this. There was 57 copies made. This is the first and only, so far, homebrew game on cartridge for the Aquarius in over 40 years. First new game on cartridge for the Aquarius. And then we still have Crazy Chicky Jr. I have 16 copies of this left. These will sell at the next convention. If you don't have your copy, you want to get it. And also, just so you know, as a retro game member, you get discounts on these things. So you want to keep that in mind. That's another reason to join the club. And you can also download them digitally. Except for Pizuro. Pizuro is not available to download digitally. Though, I technically, I probably could put that on there. The next thing I wanted to show you is this little beast sitting right here. on the Here. This is a guitar from this PlayStation 2, 3. I don't know what it was. It ain't no more. It's been gutted. And it's been reworked. It's missing a button up here on the top of fret button. It now has four fret buttons. What I have done is I have modified this to work with not only the ColecoVision, but any Atari 2600 base system. Well, I take that back. These two buttons right here and this aren't set for them yet, but they will be and it will use two control, uh, two wires for that. But what we have here is now we have our directions up, down, left, and right, right here, and our strum. Why am I showing you this? Well, you can probably notice I got a ColecoVision sitting right here too, and you probably even see the little bare cartridge sitting there. I'm gonna turn my back on you here, and I'm gonna switch you over to show you that screen. Now I'm gonna turn that screen on, see? And I wanna show you. You may recognize that song. I will put it, I will pop up a little inset box here and show you the gameplay from capturing it from the computer. But I want to show you something here. See the little picks along the bottom? See the music notes are dropping and stuff? If I push a button and strum, if I just hold my strum now, see how the music notes on the far left column are changing colors to white? And my counter is going up? Now I'm going to do two of them. Yeah, I'm doing three of them now. I'm gonna do all four buttons. Let go of the blue one there. Let go of the yellow one. Now, I haven't set the timing. It is not actually, the sound is not in time with the motion yet. I'm still playing with that. And I also have to set it so that you can't just, like I did, just hold the buttons. You actually have to physically strum. But, I want to show you the potential we have here. And not only would this, well, this game right here is ColecoVision, obviously, but any controller that we make, and I'm debating the type of controller I'd want to make. I might just make a stick controller. If you've seen them before, it's not like a full-size guitar. It's just a stick with the controls up here and the strummer and everything down here. It's just a stick, like a very minimal stick. Did I say stick enough? But I'm going to make a guitar controller that will also plug into anything that uses a standard Atari 2600 joystick. It uses two of them. Because we're gonna use, one controller will be for these positions here, and you're strumming. The other controller will read the start button, the select button, and the whammy. Right now they don't, well start and select do something on the ColecoVision, but I haven't programmed it in. But those will go through the second controller. This way it will be system independent. 
You want to write a version of, of a Guitar Hero style game for the Atari 2600? You just got to plug in the guitar we made. Want to make it for the Commodore 64 or the Atari 8 bits or the Texas Instruments with an adapter or the Sinclairs or anything? And there are a lot of systems use the Atari 2600 standard. Make it for any of those and use a controller. So, by designing a controller and a demo game also we go with it we are making it available for anybody to write a game for their system and have a hardware object now what I'm thinking about with this I, I'm trying to debate uh, because everything I do I got I got to make a little cash flow coming in it's got to pay for the bills okay so how do I want to do this do I want to make the controllers and sell them do I want to just tell you how to modify a controller? Because this one took a little bit. It took about a day of hacking at it to make it work. Tell you the schematics that this is the way it should be and have at it make your own no matter how it... I mean, I probably actually will do that because of why, why be a, an idiot or an asshole and just hold it inside as a proprietary thing. I'll tell you how they work. But for those who, those who don't want to build them, well, how do they get theirs? Well, do I want to make the controllers or do I want to just make the schematics available? That I have to think about. Then the game. I am seriously, seriously debating that the game may just be a member benefit. If you're a member of the Retro Gamers Club, you can get the game for free. I don't know. I'm still debating how that works. As for songs, those I have to work out too. But you see, the potential is there to make something cool for not only the ColecoVision, but all the other retro systems too. A little guitar. We get to renew our use, we can become a guitar hero, you know. We all wanted to be in a rock band when we were growing up. Some of us wanted to break dance. We know who I'm talking about. So anyways, that is what we've been working on this week. And also, I am working on Virix before anybody wonders, well, what about Virix? Virix is still getting worked on. Virix, I pushed the game aside and I forked it off, which meant I split it off, and I tried something new and I spent like two days fighting with it, and I said, eh, done. So I took a vacation, like a three or four day vacation over Labor Day. And now I'm going to go back to Virix, but I've been thinking it through, and I've actually come up with a slightly different concept of Virix that I'm going to tinker with and see if it works. And I think if that works the way it is in my mind, it will play a lot better. Because I was getting to the point with Virix of playability before I decided, well, can I scroll fonts better? And I didn't like it. But... I was getting to the point of playability and I realized, okay, this is fun. Note the hesitation in fun. It's fun, but it's not what I wanted it to be. So, we're gonna see what I can do. So, Virix is still on, being worked on. I wanted to put something together on Guitar Hero today, put something that, I mean, obviously it's not a fully blown game, nowhere near, it's like 25% into a game if you're lucky, but I wanted to have something that you can interact with instead of it just demoing a song and notes falling down the screen. So Guitar Hero is still floating around out there. Don't forget about Joe the Eskimo and Joe the Eskimo, Grey Castle, Arcadian 2 in January. Don't forget, become a member of the Retro Gamers Club. Again, the links are down at the bottom there. Join us. We're a pretty big club, considering We've only been around for since March, whatever numbers that works out to us at six months. We've only been around six months, and yeah, we're close to 60 members right now, which is not bad. Yeah, you're, oh my God, 60 members, that's nothing. No, it's not bad actually considering it's just all word of mouth. There's no advertising involved. And if you know anything about me and the struggles I've gone through over the past couple years with a certain entity that we don't talk about much anymore, you know that, that that's pretty damn good considering. But we'll continue. I'm gonna persevere. Screw them. Don't have to worry about those people. Anyways, Retro Gamers Club, be sure to join. Check out 8-Bit Millie Games if you want some games. Have a good day.